Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you very much for for watching, and thank you very much for for the support you've shown uh, in the past videos that we released. Uh, we, we have a series of videos we did in, on momentum. The first one was a full lesson where we explained all the concepts. And then thereafter, we went to multiple choice, giving out hints and a few exam type questions. So now with this one, we are just going to deal with graphs. When I'm giving graphs as to how best can I attend or look into, into the questions thereof. So we, without wasting any time, kindly follow us on Facebook. at Nambani Academy. Uh, the Institute for Math and Science, and for YouTube, it's Nambane Academy. Uh, kindly subscribe and please tell your friend, uh, share ideas, such that each and every one of us can be able to to do well in 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 physical science. So the very first question I have here, it's a question on a graph. And I'm going to read it and then try to analyze it before we can go into answering the questions. So what it says here, it says the graph below shows how a momentum of a car changes with time just and after a head-on collision with car B. Then car A has a mass of 1,500 kg while car B has a mass of 900 kg. Car B was traveling at a constant velocity of 15 meters per second uh, west, that is now before the collision, and then take positive uh, as east or east as positive and consider the system to be an isolated system. So for me to remember, I'm just going to highlight it here to say uh, towards east is, is positive. But I need now to analyze the graph first. What, what can I say? Because now this is momentum versus time graph for car A. So it basically says here, I have now my momentum before. And then here, I have my momentum after. And then this part here, we explained that it is going now to be during the, the collision. So this analysis will help me to know exactly what I need to do in terms of uh, approaching the question. So I can easily say also because there isn't any change in the direction of or of momentum here because I can see it is still uh, in the same axis or above uh, the x-axis so it basically tells me that uh, there wasn't any change in in direction so p initial it's in the same direction as uh, p final so that's what I, I, I need to to understand so at, at 4.1 uh, for one mark uh, what do you understand by the term isolated system? So we came across this as a definition. We said an isolated system is a system in which the net force or the resultant force, resultant force is equal to zero so this will be your your one mark one mark then at 4.2 use the information in the graph to answer the following questions calculate the magnitude of the velocity of car a just before the collision so where do i know uh, or start looking in, in my graph, it means I am going to start looking at this part here. So this part, it's my momentum before. 
So I can use maybe an equation which is 4.21. Before maybe the equation, let's just analyze the information of what is happening before the collision. Before the collision, I have the momentum which is PI, which is equals to 30,000 kg meters per second. And then what else do I have? I have the mass of car A, which is just 1,500 kg. So this one becomes easy from the data that is given. I can easily say P is equals to MV. So this will be 30,000, which is equals to 1,500 and then V. So divide both sides by 1,500, divide by 1,500, then these ones cancel each other. Then you find that your V initial for A should be something like 20 meters per second. So this will be your 20 meters per second. And what will be the direction thereof? The direction is easy for us to say it should be towards towards east so it will be marked in such a way that you get one for the formula and then for the whole substitution here you'll get another one and then for the whole answer here you'll get another one so it will be a total of of three marks then at 4.2, because of space, let me copy this one. And then at 4.2, let me delete this to create space. So at 4.2, it says, calculate the velocity of car B just after the collision. So what is it that I know now? Because I am working with two objects. It probably says to me, the examiner is trying to ask me now to apply linear conser uh, the conservation of linear momentum. So at 4.2, and it makes it easy for me because I'm looking at two objects now. I am looking at A and B. So once I have two objects, uh, chances are I am going to apply conservation of uh, linear momentum. So conservation of linear momentum at 4.22 we will be able to say, can we write down the data that is given? Yes, we can. P initial of A is given, which is now 30,000. And then we have the mass of A, which is equals to 1,500 kg. And then this is kg meters per second. What else do we know about maybe B? Uh, with B, we have M of B, which is equals to 900 kg. And then what else do we know about B? Uh, B was traveling east or west with 15 meters per second. So V of B, this is now before, ne? is equals to 15 meters per second. This is now just before the collision. Maybe I should highlight it to say this year, it's now before the collision. And then what happened after the collision? We need now to analyze that. Did they move as a unit? No, they did not. Because we're told that uh, each one of them 
we're traveling uh, separately after after the collision thereof so we'll be able to say but what happened after the collision what happened after the collision can you write down the data for that yes we have p initial or oh, sorry p final of a which is just now equals to 14 14000 this is this part here so it is going to be 14000 kg meters per, per second do we have the mass now of b yes the mass of b will still be the same it will be just 900 kg and with this information, I will be able to apply my conservation of linear momentum, which basically says uh, the sum of momentum before is equals to the sum of the momentum after. Then what do I know? I know that M of A, V of A, plus now M of B, V of B, is just equals to m of a v of a plus m of b v of of b then this is now the momentum before which is just 30000 plus uh, minus 15 which is the initial velocity of car B, multiply by 900, which is equals to the momentum after of car A, which was just 14,000 kg meters per second, plus now uh, the mass of car B, which is just 900, and then VB, is what the examiner is asking us. So after uh, manipulating and solving for VB, uh, we'll find that VB is equals to negative, oh, sorry, it's positive. It's positive two comma, seven eight meters per second and then the direction thereof it's east because of the answer is is positive so this is the easiest way of trying and explaining in detail how to apply conservation of linear momentum when you are given you are given a graph but the ideal way of doing it is just check how many objects do you have once you have two the chances are linear conservation of linear momentum should be applicable to to assist you in getting the correct answer so writing down the data it's it's always nice because you are able now to clearly see and know as to how best can i approach uh, this this particular question so going now to 4.23 my bot is also full maybe what i need to do is i must just select this and then this so that I can create now a new space. So at 4.23, I should emphasize this. We know that uh, when we talk of a slope, our slope or a gradient in previous lessons we had will be changing y over changing x but when i look at the graph that i have here the graph that i have is a graph that says on the y-axis i have now change in momentum over changing changing time 
and then I still have now my slope. So maybe I should also emphasize that now this is just the general equation. General equation for, for the slope. So when I look at this changing P over changing T, it basically says my slope now should represent should represent f net and which principle is that it's uh, conservation not conservation impulse momentum theorem or second law in terms of of momentum so we'll be able to say this is just f net is equals to changing p over changing changing time so basically if i can calculate my slope then i will be able to get to the correct answer so i'm going to do it in 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 in, in two ways uh, for me to to get to to the correct answer so once i understand this then it becomes easy because exactly i know what to do even if i were to go directly and use f net multiply by changing t is equals to uh, changing p i wouldn't have any problem because all the information that i need is given so i'm going to do it in in, in twofold just to emphasize uh, this uh, use of of the slope so basically i will just say now f net is equals to what is my change in momentum my change in momentum is going to be 14,000 minus now the 30,000 over changing t so where is my changing t i did explain that magnitude of the net average force acting on an object during the the collision that is very key that is important so where is my time limit or my time range during the collision and we did explain that it should be this part here and obviously this time here so it is going to be easy now that i have my time which will be just two comma uh, sorry 20 It's 20 comma 2 minus 20 comma 1. So the final answer thereof will be something like 160000 zero, 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 zero newtons. So this is a way of maybe using the, the gradient that is given. But if you check or oh, when you want to use f net multiply by changing t is equals to changing p, all the information will still also be available on the graph. It will be f net, and then we set now changing t is our contact time. So our contact time here will be 0, 0, 0,1. So it's still the same as. Uh, 20 comma 2 minus now 20 comma 1 which is equals to change in momentum will be now momentum final which is 1400 zero, zero, minus now the 30 the 30,000 then we divide again by 0 comma 1 divide again by 0 comma 1 this ones cancels each other then you have f net which is just 1600000 zero, 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 zero newtons so it's it's basically the same thing but the idea was for me to emphasize that if you have a graph of momentum versus time if you have a graph of momentum versus time this one here the slope 
will be equals to f net that is the reason why i chose this particular question so i'm just explaining that if you want to calculate f net when you are given momentum versus time the gradient or the slope will give you your your f net so let's look at a uh, mark allocation it was around four marks so it will be one for the correct formula and then one for the whole change and then one for the whole change in time and then another one for the final answer hence it will be your your four marks so this this was a nice question uh, because we we are usually uh, saying or not assessed in terms of of the graphs so uh, we are moving towards uh, a new era or a version of assessing more in terms of of the graphs because the diagnostic report has showed us that we are failing or we 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 are in need of support when it comes to the graphs of of momentum or graphs generally so we, we fail to interpret uh, the graphs hence this uh, video will 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 somehow assist you when i explain this particular concepts so that's basically it so this one was just uh, 13 marks so i hope it addresses uh, some of the misconceptions you had in in terms of dealing with the graphs so this one was basically working or the information that was given on the graph was just for for one for one car or one object but now what will happen if we introduce two cars now so the graph that i am looking at now is a graph where i have drag a with a mass of 20 kg also moving now eastwards collides now with a drag of mass 1500 and then the graph is not drawn to scale shows how momentum of each drag varies with with time so this is key to understand the graph before what is happening here so what is happening here is i have drag a which is moving eastwards so i'm going to say east it's positive so this is now east already i can easily see that now b is coming now from a different direction as a track a so b is obviously coming from from west so its momentum should be negative so that's why i explained uh, in, in 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 the first video that it will depend on the situation that is given so with this uh, graph here i can easily say that the plus and minus they only emphasize the direction of of the momentum but what happened after okay this part here at 0 comma 2 it is let me use a different color to emphasize so this part here it is just during the the collision so this is during the collision so what happened after the collision after the collision i can see that each one of them they are moving separately it's easy to tell how each one of them has now what their own individual momentums so it means it's after collision we have a momentum for car track a and then we have a momentum for track track b but if this was just one line of something maybe of this nature let me quickly try and have something here and then we have this one line as a unit then it will say they are moving as 
a unit or together so this is few things that i need to to understand so they will be moving as as a unit so in this case sorry in this case they are moving uh, separately <coughs> in this case they are moving they are moving separately so i can understand that uh, fully <coughs> so this is me uh, trying to analyze the graph before i can even attempt to get into the correct correct answers so this is what it is so once you understand what is happening here believe you me you won't have any problem of answering the questions that follow so i'm going to remove this because this was just for emphasis it's not going to assist us in terms of answering the questions now so let's answer the questions and then at 4.1 uh, it says at 4.1, write down the principle of conservation of linear momentum. It's a law that we need now to know. It's two marks. So remember, it's two or zero. So we need to write uh, all the keywords in the right uh, context. So we'll say the total linear momentum. of an isolated system of an isolated system is conserved nice two marks is two or zero so you'll get your your two marks then 4.2 write down the initial momentum of drag a so when we look at the graph we said this here should be the initial momentum of the drag so this is p initial of drag a so when we give the answer then we say it's 4.2 p a of the drag is equals to equals to 6,0 multiplied by 10 to power 3 SI units very important kg meters per second its momentum is a vector quantity which direction it must be towards towards east towards east even though it's one mark then you will lose a lot of marks if you don't have the SI unit and the, the direction thereof. So that's the reason why I'll say I'll give you one for the whole thing here with the correct SI unit and the correct, the correct direction. So if you just write 6 kg meters per second, it will be incorrect because we are told that the momentum is to now to the 10 to the power to the power 3. And the direction also was given. So the direction is towards east. So that is why it's one mark. It looks like it's an easy question to answer. But honestly, once you have incorrect SI unit, once you don't have the correct direction, then that one mark, we are going to lose it. Then at 5.4.3, determine the magnitude and the direction of the velocity of drag B before the collision. How many objects do I have? I have two objects. So the idea should be I am going to work with conservation of linear momentum and i was told that this system is an isolated system so it means i can apply now my conservation of 
linear momentum so let's write the information that is given that is now at 4.3 we have before we have pa which is just 6 comma 0 multiplied by 10 to power 3 kg meters per second what else do we know about uh, momentum of b before momentum of b before we don't know that is what uh, the examiner is trying to ask us so it means we need to know what is the momentum initial of b so once we have that then we can use uh, our equations to get to the correct answer but now what happened after after i have p of a which is just equals to from the graph it's one comma zero multiplied by 10 to the power negative 3 kg meters per, per second do i have the momentum of track b after yes i have p of b after it's just from the graph also something like 2 2 comma 0 multiplied by 10 to the power 3 multiply by 10 to the power 3 kg meters per second kg meters per per second then i can apply my conservation of linear momentum so the sum of momentum initial is equals to the sum of momentum after so this will be momentum of okay let's write m a v a plus now m b v b which is equals to m a v a plus m b v b so the momentum before it's 6 multiplied by 10 to power 3 plus now uh, 1500 which is the mass of drag b so 1500 vb which is equals to the momentum of ka a or drag a after we have it as 1 multiplied by 10 to power 3 which plus now the momentum of uh, drag B after which is just 2 multiplied by 10 to power 3. I need to emphasize that this one is positive because it's now in the same direction it's towards the east as well it is above the the x axis or our time axis so once it is above it says now we have a change in direction that is the reason why this momentum is positive that is the reason why this 6 comma 0 multiplied by 10 to power 3 is positive that is the reason why the p final of a uh, drag a also as as positive because they are now above the time axis and everything in above the time axis is going to be positive and that would be towards towards the east so with all the information that is given now it will be easy to for me to say v initial of b will be something like minus two meters per per second but now i can further say v initial of b will be equals to two meters per second and this should be a west because of the negative answer that is very important and the question was saying determine the magnitude and the direction that is very very key so it means i am going to be given a mark once i have the correct magnitude so i can easily say this will be one and for the correct direction that will be one then the other part obviously will be one for uh, correct formula 
and then it will be one for the correct substitution there and then one for the correct substitution and then you will end up with your your five marks very easy but complex to understand so just remember that our negative and positive in a graph of momentum versus time just represents the the direction so this is very very important and key for 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 one to understand and the information of what happened after the collision will be given in a graph in a sense that you will see what happened after the collision so in this case they are moving separately because each one of them has their own independent air momenta so once we have one line like i did say earlier on it will inform us they are moving as as a unit so let's go to 4.4 so let me just duplicate this and then after that we'll be able to to do more of 4.4 what's nice about 4.4 is it's asking us to use energy principles because when we spoke of collisions we said now when i work with collisions for me to determine whether a collision is inelastic or for me to explain whether the collision is inelastic or not it is important for me to calculate the total kinetic energy before and total kinetic energy after once i am able to to do that then i can easily compare if the energy is not the same or if the total kinetic energy before and after it's not the same then i can be able to say the energy adds it's not it's not conserved so i'm just going to clear my board here for me to be able to have some space to work on just to create a space where i can be able to to use the spot now now that that is done we need to be able to say at 4.4 We are going to compare the total energy before total kinetic energy before and the total kinetic energy after so there are a few things that i need because i know that the formula for kinetic energy is ek is equals to half mv squared so in everything that i have here honestly i don't have any values or information about the velocity the only thing i have is the momentum and the momentum thereafter so it says to me i need now to get my velocities first so i am going to say before i have p of a which is equals to mv so i'm trying to calculate the initial velocity for drag a so i'm going to have something like 6 multiplied by 10 to power 3 which is equals to the mass of drag a is 2000 and then v initial of a is what i'm looking for then i divide both sides by 2000 divide by 2000 then i get my v initial as 3 meters per second and then what about drag b drag b i calculated its v initial that is the 4.3 so v of initial drag b is just two meters per second so i can calculate now the kinetic energy before the sum or the total so it will be just ek before is equals to half mv squared of a before plus 
half mv squared of b before then this will be just 1 over 2 the mass of a is 2000 v is something like 3 squared plus now half of 1500 that is for track b multiply by 2 squared then the final answer will give us something like uh, on my calculator it's something like one uh, 12,000 12,000 12,000 joules so this is the total kinetic energy before then what happened after uh, after I have P of A, MV, smaller P, then I can easily say that uh, this was 1 multiplied by 10 to power 3, the mass was 2000 V, then I got my V as 0 0.5 meters per second and then i still don't have velocity for track b but i have the momentum so for p b it's equals to mv which is now just uh, 1500 multiply by v multiply by v and then the momentum was given as 2 times 10 to power to power 3 so i got my v as something like 1 comma 3 3 3 3, 3 meters per per second then i need to calculate ek so it will still be the same formula so it will be half of a 2000 multiply by 0 0.5 squared plus half of 1500 multiply by 1.333 squared then the final answer was 15 83 comma 335 joules so this was the final answer so can i tell that uh, this is an elastic or inelastic collision because now my kinetic energy is not the same it's not conserved that means the total before and the total after i can say this must be an inelastic collision why total kinetic energy total kinetic energy is not conserved it's not conserved 100 percent so that's basically how to answer and also proving that an equation uh, a collision it's inelastic or inelastic so uh, I, I didn't do your traditional uh, questions of two cars colliding uh, they've been overdone so we are moving to a point where graphs now are going to be more assessed and the approach will still be the same because even if you have your traditional questions that maybe came across before this one then you'll be still be able to do or perform this 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 particular calculations but what was nice about this is also from a graph you are able to prove a collision as elastic or inelastic so that is the reason why uh, it is important for you to follow up with all the videos that we have recorded so the first one is where we explain all the concepts so the concepts will include now when is a collision inelastic what informs us to say eventually this uh, calculation or this collision it's an inelastic elastic collision so from me to you 
thank you very much and kindly don't forget to subscribe to our channel uh, which is Nambani Academy on, on YouTube and uh, like us also on, on Facebook Nambani Academy the Institute for Math and Science uh, I believe what we are doing we will assist quite a lot of uh, you guys out there so tell your friend uh, share this information so that each and every one of us can be able to to achieve so from me to you thank you very much and have a lovely day